Hello everyone, my name is Ridwan Ibrahim and I welcome you to another episode of Start Pro. In this episode, we will be designing a steel roof truss. In one of our previous videos, we've designed a steel frame. So for this particular one, we will be checking out a roof truss that is made of steel material, structural steel. Alright, so the question says, design the below roof truss using the following section. So where is that roof truss? Here we have, here is the roof truss. The roof truss is a plain truss. So we have the 2D representation of that roof truss here. You can see the height of the truss is 2000 mm at the apex here. And then the nodal spacing is 2000 mm as well. Okay, then we can see the isometric view of the plain truss. You can see that the height of 2000 is still there and then the nodal spacing of 2000 is still there. Then the distance between the um, a truss and then the succeeding truss is 3500. So we can see the spacing between the truss is 3500 mm. So this is the roof truss that we want to design. So let's see the sections that is provided in the question. Alright, um, the question says we should try a section of 150 mm by 150 mm by 50 mm of equal angle for the top cord. We should try 120 mm by 120 mm by 8 mm of equal angle for the bottom cord. And we should use the same section for the vertical and also the same section for the diagonal. Okay? Then it says that the aluminium roofing sheet gauge is 0.55 mm. So this is the thickness of the aluminium roofing sheet that should be used for the design. Then it says that we should use a fiber board for the ceiling. So the thickness of the fiber board should be 10 mm. It also says that the weight of the pore line is 18 kg per meter. Then we have the unit weight of the fiber board ceiling. Um, the thickness of the fiber board ceiling has been given to be 10 mm. But what is the unit weight? The unit weight is 7.7 .7 kN per meter squared. Also, the unit weight of the aluminium roofing sheet is given to be 27 kN per meter squared. Then it says that the category of the roof should be category H. All right. Then it says we should consider three load combinations. We should consider 1.35 GK, that is dead load, plus 1.5 QK, that is live load. We should also consider this other one, 1.35 of dead load, 1.5 of live load, and 0.9 of wind load. Also, we should consider the third one, 1.0 of dead load and 1.5 of wind load. And then, it also says we should check for the deflection. And there is a hint for us to check for the deflection. It says we should take the maximum allowable deflection to be L over 240. That is the length of the truss divided by 240. So here are the parameters. Um, this particular um, document, I will drop it in the description box so that you can go through it if you want to. Now let's go to Start Pro and then we can start with the modeling. Okay, then I will go to New Project. I'll pick um, Space. Then I can pick. Um, I can give it a name. Let me call it Steel Roof truss then i'll pick uh, meter as the unit for the length and then kilonewton for the force click on next and then finish all right um the first thing to do is we need to uh, model so i will take away all of this um let's see what we have in the drawing i have one node here over here and i have another one over here um, this is two meter span and how many do we have one two three four five six seven eight so that makes everything to be 16 meter you know eight times two that's 16 meter so that is 16 meter um let's come back here and i can have one node at the origin zero 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 and then i can have another one at um 16 000 mm in the x direction and then zero on the y and I can have one zero on the X and then 2000 mm in the Y. All right, let me put this in front of you. And then I can start by joining them together. 
let me join this and then I can join this and then I can join this all right then pick the node cursor click on this beam right click click on insert node then let me insert seven nodes I'm going to insert seven nodes then click on add endpoint and just click on OK so if you had um, seven nodes in between just as we have it there then the same thing goes for this right click and then click on insert nodes over here click on seven click on add endpoint and then click on OK then we have that too then you can start joining them with beams you know continue doing all of this and then perfect we are done and then we have the diagonal brazen too something like this yes yeah and that is perfect the next step will be to assign the property for all of the members then you can go to general and then under the property i can go to section database um i would prefer to use the british and then i can go to angle this is angle in the question the sections i need i need 150 by 150 by 15 i also need 120 by 120 by 8 so um let's look for that i have 150 by 150 by 15 i can add or you double click on it it is still the same thing they also need 120 by 120 by 8 then you can click on add then um i can close that the 150 by 150 will be assigned to just the top code whereas the 120 will be assigned to everything so um let's go back to start pro this let me pick this one and then let me select all of the top code select all of the top code and then i can assign these to all selected beams click on assign and then yes perfect now i have to assign these to all the remaining then instead of selecting them i can just go to select and then go to missing attributes then missing property then all other elements that do not have property yet will be selected then i can assign this to all of them so that has been assigned so you can check the 3d rendered view all right this is what we have in the um, 3d rendered view let me close this you can see the angle bar and let me close this all right then the next thing will be to assign the support then you can go to support and then i will click on create i'm going to create a pin support and then you can click on add then i can just use um cursor to assign just click on assign then i will drop one here i'll drop one here and then i'll drop one here so that is all the next thing will be to load the trust we need to load the trust then let's go to um loading and definition however before we load it let's see the manual calculations of the loading um here we have the load analysis now what is the maximum span of the truss the maximum span of the roof truss is 16.125 meter you can check that here you can see that here that is the top chord the top chord is 16.125 meter all right then the spacing of the node is 2000 mm which is 2 meter and then the spacing of the truss is 3.5 meter which is what you can see in the isometric view all right then so that's what we have here we have the maximum span and then we have the space of the truss and then we have the spacing of the node now let's calculate the dead load the self weight of the truss actually i can assume the self weight of the truss to be something but that is if i want to do a total manual design however um start pro we calculate the um self weight so that is why i didn't include it here and then i just put the question mark then what is the self weight of the roofing sheet it has been given that the thickness of the roofing sheet should be 0.55 mm that is the gauge and then the unit weight has been given to be 27 kilonewton per meter cube 
then if you multiply this with this we will have 0 0.015 kN per meter squared it should be squared all right and then the weight of the ceiling the ceiling is a fiber board the unit weight has been given to be 7.7 .7 kN per meter cube as well and then we will multiply by the thickness which is 10 mm that will give us 0.077 kN per meter squared that is also a dead load which is um the ceiling so then we have um weight of service any service that will be on the roof truss which will be permanent for example the connection the weight of the connection that is 0.2 kN per meter squared okay and then the weight of the pole line of course the pole line will be on the roof truss the weight of the pole line is given to be 18 kg per meter if i divide that by 2 that will give me 9 kg per meter squared then if I convert that to kN per meter squared, this is what I will have. Then you can add up all of the dead load, that is this one, this one, this one, and then this one. And that we add up to 0.381 kN per meter squared. So this is the load in kN per meter squared. But as far as you know, we don't use an area load for roof truss. What we use is nodal load. That is the main difference between a truss and a frame. A truss is only loaded at the joint, while a frame can be loaded as a rear load. All right. Why a frame can be loaded at anywhere. All right. So let's convert this into a point load. Then to convert that, we multiply this 0.381, multiply by the nodal distance, and then multiply by the spacing of the truss. So we have the 2 meter by 3.5 that will give us 2.67 kN. So this is the load that will be on the truss pertaining to the dead load. Then the next one is live load. Um, to know the live load, we need to know the category of the roof. In the question, it has been provided that we should consider category H. So let's see our Euro code of 1991-2002. Let's just go to table 6.9 to confirm what category H is and what is the value assigned to category H for the live load. Alright, here is table 6.9 and then we have the categorization of roof. So for category H, category H is any roof that is not accessible except if you want to do a normal maintenance or if you want to repair it. So that is the kind of roof we want to design. That is the category of roof I have provided in the question. Okay. So what is the load that is assigned to category H? Let's check that. Now let's see values of actions. It says the live load, which is QK in kilonewton per meter squared, it should be selected within the range of 0 kilonewton per meter squared up to 1.0 kilonewton per meter squared. So any value between 0 and 1, you can use that as your um, live load, which is QK. All right. So in the question, I decided to use a higher range of that, which is 0 0.85. Since the maximum possible is 1, then I am deciding to use 0 0.85. Someone else might decide to use 0 0.7, 0 0.75, 0 0.9. It is still within the range provided in the code. So I've used 0 0.85. The same way we did here, we cannot use the area load. We have to convert it into a point load. Then that will be 0 0.85 kN per meter squared multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3.5 meter. And that will give us 5.95 kN. So this is our live load. Then the next load consideration is the wind load. As you know, one of the important loads that affects a roof is wind load. Now, um, to calculate the vertical component of the wind load, the formula is given to be this multiplied by CPE multiplied by cos theta. Alright, then what is GP? GP is the wind velocity pressure, of course, dynamic. And then that can be assumed to be 1.5 kN per meter squared. Also, CPE that is the resultant pressure coefficient and that can be taken as 0 0.9 Also the angle of the truss you can just do a simple mathematics So calculate tan is equal to opposite over adjacent 
the opposite is 2 meter while the adjacent is 60 meter um we have um two two meter spacing you can see two two meters so one two three four five six seven eight eight times two meter that will be 16 meter so two meter divided by 16 meter then we can determine the angle of the truss then the angle of the truss is equivalent to 7.125 degrees then we can now calculate the vertical component of the wind using this formula and that will give us to be 1.34 kN per meter squared. Of course, using the same process, we have to convert it into point load, and that will be multiplying that with 2, multiplying by 3.5, and that will be 9.38 kN. Now, these are the loads that will be used to analyze and design the roof truss. All we have to do now is to insert them in Start Pro. Now, let's go back to Start Pro, but we have to do that in the next video. I will not want the video to be too long. So, let's catch up.